I'm just uh, about to to uh, put my materials together to go out sketching, and the um, first thing is some pencils. I'm I'm not going to be painting uh, on on site, but I will be using pencils. So obviously sharpening a few of them and. Maybe I, uh, I'll take with me, although I might not get round to using them this morning, uh, maybe take with me some, some uh, uh, watercolour pencils. Um, so those go into my travelling kit. And... Uh, an eraser and a sharpener and the whole point about about this is to have uh, just what you need and not a lot more because you don't want it sometimes I, I've given uh, talks to, to uh, or, or done um, some uh, on-site teaching of people uh, and they come equipped with fantastic quantities of, of wonderfully expensive hardwood boxes with all sorts of uh, special uh, art materials and, and all that kind of thing. What you need is a lightweight provision, there's a sketch book there uh, and a a, a travelling stool and uh, maybe a camera, but I, I generally wouldn't, wouldn't want one. Uh, and also, very important, a hat. That's, a, that's to shade your eyes. If you're out in, as today is strongly sunlit, uh, it's important from that point of view, but also to protect yourself. And then the the paper uh, I'm using is is a French um, watercolor paper. Uh, it's acid free, made from cotton waste. Once upon a time, it would have been described as rag paper. That, that when when rags were were um, proper uh, natural fibres, but, but these days there's too much man-made fibre in them, so you, they no longer do that. They make it from cotton waste. But the point about it is it's acid-free. Uh, an imperial sheet size is so big. Um, I, I have a number of sizes which I know I've got mounts and frames all ready to accommodate. So I tend to work to a number of, of sizes, which include a whole imperial sheet, a half imperial sheet, a quarter imperial sheet, which might be a quarter uh, in, 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 that, in that direction, or it might be a, a quarter in, in that direction. Um, and and uh, I have a Travelling drawing board, which acts as a wallet as well. So again, not carrying anything that's uh, that's if I want to uh, make any smaller sketches, but I, I don't think I'll uh, go with that today. Um, and that that is my entire kit for the outing. So I'm ready to go with that. One more thing. Little bit, but well, they say there are various things that you should uh, consider when choosing a good site, um, and so we'll uh, we'll perhaps look to see if we can find somewhere. What, one of the important aspects of it is always choose somewhere which is nice and close to a public convenience. Well, in, in Britain these days, I don't, you know, good good luck with that. The other thing is, I always take with me some refreshment and apple on this occasion. Um, so that goes in as well. I 
can just sort of sit down and think about it when I'm having a, having a bite of something to eat as well. Uh, right, all set. Uh, now then, uh, I'm choosing now a scene where I'm going to be sort of looking into the light. Um, it's got some quite interesting little things going on. And then working on the lock and even a grey wagtail. Um, but I've now got to make my mind up that uh, whether I want to make this a scene which which includes the lock gates, the pylon of the bridge beyond and the keeper's cottage, in which case we've got a rather horizontal uh, composition. Or do I want to have a quite a large part of the image, these wonderful reflections in this very still water this morning? I'm sort of in inclined to go with uh, a, a long letterbox shaped uh, image. Uh, I bring I bring paper as we've seen. I, I bring paper of every different size and shape with me, um, just in case we didn't know where we were going to be. I was going to be working. Um, And uh, I'm just going to start going. Uh, I, as I know roughly what I want to get in, I'm now going to sort of think my way through what what gets onto the page. Um, uh, the way I'm going to try to to do this, if if I'm far enough away from it, is to see how the image subtends to the eye so I know that I, this pencil is so long I'm going to see how wide a piece of paper I've got one two three and a half pencil width so if I just do it straight as a sub, what it, how it subtends to the eye let's just see I've got one two three and a half so I can get from the abutment of this lock gate here round to the far side of the keeper's cottage which enclosed most of what I'm interested in I think I might cheat a little bit um, it's so it's so much faster if you're drawing uh, in on the scene to uh, just take it literally as, as it subtends to the eye and, put, and measure it straight down so I I'm looking now to see what the width of the lock gates is and using my thumb as a marker on the pencil um, there is that's the width of, of the lock gates and I can just put that straight onto the onto the, the paper so that's the method I'm going to be employing so I won't I won't repeat myself too often in that regard uh, right I'm right-handed and I'm working with a, this is a standard HP pencil, uh, even so it's soft enough that it will, it will smudge if I rub my hands over the top of it. So I'm going to start on the top left hand corner and I don't think there's anything much higher than the, the roof of the lock keeper's cottage which comes to about there. So the, the, there's no mapping out. I'm just I'm off. Um, usually the first marks that I make are the ones that I erase. Nearly always get it wrong to begin with, and I probably take a leaf out of Turner's book and slightly exaggerate how much of the pedestrian, big Diglis pedestrian bridge I can 
don't actually see. Um, he, he was terrible with that kind of cheating. Disgraceful, disgraceful man. Uh, yeah. So, this is a subject which is pretty easy in terms of, of um, recording the, the colours um, because it, it's nearly all monochromes um, by chance. So I'm not going to have to, to record too much in the way of, of uh, colour notes today. But if I do, I, I tend to uh, scribble them in the edges, on the edges. Um, for instance, in a moment I'm going to, there's a, a, I don't know what it is, a measuring stick or something showing the flood level or whatever. So, so um, that, that uh, is in a contrasting red. I think I'm going to abandon the idea of, of um, using it exactly how it tends to the eye and adopt a slightly more long-winded procedure, which is to, to choose something and use it as a module to work everything else from. So, because I, I think that's going to, this is a question of how much uh, fits onto, onto the page. Um, and if I, if I look at, at the height of that wall, as it tends, it's going to bring it right down there, which is going to take a lot of the fun out of all the reflections I want to include. So I'm going to show it, draw it slightly smaller than that easy way that it subtends the eye. You may think I'm not getting anywhere, but in my head I am here. I'm sorting this out. Uh, As usual, what I'm doing will not be in the textbooks you read. This is not how you do it, but it's how I do it. A process I can only recommend. as well as reflections in the water, we've got a shadow on the water as well. And that's a particularly tricky thing to try and capture. And 
gotta think about that. faced brickwork. Uh, now I don't intend to draw in every brick at this stage, just enough of it to remind me what there is. I have a what you might describe as a as a, a shorthand visual shorthand to remind myself about you know, what, whether a roof is tiled or slated or something like that and I, and I need to look at it and I know so I don't, I don't need to when I'm on site where the time is valuable uh, as long as I've communicated to myself what's going on I don't need to have drawn everything in. It's an interesting moment, just as I get to that point, there's a chap standing on the lock gate. Getting in very quickly. I'm not sure if I wanted to put in the high-vis vest. It might upset my colour tone. Absolutely horizontal. Uh, it's just be easy just to use edge of a pencil or something, something that's straight. Uh, I'm not at all ashamed to do things like that. Uh, you can 
see that I'm doing something which is um, in the main just outlined so far so that I can come back to things. Usually, usually when you've got a uh, shadow from uh, something going away from you or coming in this direction, let's say the light is coming in your direction, usually you would find the shadow would be sort of hectic, headed in that direction. But at the moment, because there's the batter on the wall, the wall is sloping in slightly. Shadow is actually in the other direction there, which, which uh, at the just at the far corner of the block there. Just draw that in as I see it. Just draw in the shadow. And I think the light is nearly perfect. You've got to seize the moment as far as lighting is concerned because uh, things can change quite rapidly. I'm working more or less into the light, uh, although that's going to give me some problems because I'm going to start getting a getting, uh, change of light on my page, but at least my eyes are not having to adjust to the brightness of the sun, to the darkness of a page and back up again and so on. And uh, the shadows change in, a, in a, uh, much less if, if I'm looking into the light than if I've got the light behind me when the, the, the shadows are moving around. So um, you might you might like to just look at look over uh, at the lock gates at the moment, and you'll see that that the near near set of lock gates shadow, as I say, the, 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 they're in shadow this side and the shadow on the right hand side of the lock is sloping as if, it, as if uh, it's in the wrong direction. But if you then look across to the other set of lock gates, which I'm going to get round to pretty shortly, uh, then you've got what I would expect, which is that the uh, angle of the sun gives you a, um, a diagonal uh, shadow there um, in the way I would expect. So, so the shadows are defining the form, so I, it's, it's rather important for me to get that right, if nothing else. clear impression of the of the batter of the of the of the wall there. This is all quite interesting stuff because I've now got to put that into the reflections.
I see we've got some action coming. Constable used to say, and he was one of the first people to go and work sketch in the field, uh, he used to say in the three hours that you are on site making an image, your subject will appear. And there they are, there's some, there's some mallard just arrived. Quite interesting colour of the, the this those two males there yeah. and the heads instead of being that wonderful viridian greeny colour the, the, the iridescent green these are sort of an iridescent blue which is interesting. I'll record it faithfully. I think with, as far as in the world of ducks it goes, um, I think we've just been frisked. Obviously not interested in this anymore. We've not thrown them any breadcrumbs or anything to eat. Very disappointing for them. through arches or over things to see something else further on uh, because it, it, the game is to engage somebody looking at your work and one easy way of doing that is to provide a bit of a narrative. I'm changing pencils now, I'll discard that one for the moment. This one's a bit shorter so might destroy my measuring of the scene a bit. Now, one of the things that I have to decide is if there are any things I do not wish to include. Uh, or other things that I need to put in. Sometimes if I've got commissions that people want. Their, um, recently deceased Labrador or included or something like that. But um, more often than not, I'm, I'm being asked to leave out the unsightly telegraph pole or, or whatever. And Actually, on this occasion, one thing I'm just debating about is the safety rails on the lock gates. I'm not quite sure whether, I've, I've not drawn them in yet. I'm just not sure whether they're helping me or not. They probably are. I can be able to them in. And I've left out the the Highlands jacket. I don't know. Always take them out again, as you see. time to get to the point but here we are I'm starting now to look at the cottage
the problems with working like taking in about uh, about a hundred and ten, hundred and twenty degree view is that uh, you're getting uh, you're getting to have to control the perspective and um, it gets it gets worse if if, um, if you get an even further around because as well as there being things that, that diminishing as they get get further from you uh, the, that it, that that still applies to things that are up in the air above you. So if I was to draw in, as they're just off the page, as it happens, but there's some vertical pylons here. Um, if I was to draw them in as they are, uh, really they they sort of they sort of le leaning into the to the picture when you've got uh, such a wide view as this. Um, so uh, there's a sort of convention with ar architectural drawing, certainly, which is my background, uh, that you, you take out the vertical perspective and just show full uprights as upright on the drawing. But that can give trouble in other ways. For instance, and this cottage is not very high, so it's not a big problem, but um, I'm going to choose certain level at which to, to mark out where the fenestration comes and if, if there is truly a lot of vertical perspective if I choose to make that to set that out at the lower level that's going to be completely different to if I was to measure it at the high level where, where the, the whole of the building is actually um, subtends the eye a little, a little less. So uh, you have to be aware of these things and be prepared to lie in your teeth about what you can actually see. famous artist that the history of life has produced. sketching in a, uh, a few lines just to indicate that this is a slate roof as opposed to a, a tile one. A lot, an awful lot of the drawing will be obliterated by paint at some stage, but that's that's because the, the process in the studio is an utterly different one from, from that out here in the, in the field. And, uh, I love doing this, but the, the real magic comes when, when you're ma manipulating stuff whole environment that the studio offers. It's a very fancy ornamental barge 
board on the gable of the cottage there. things I had to work out, learn, is that the, as far as making drawings and paintings is concerned, if it looks right, it is right. But sometimes it takes me a while to actually Get it right. So I think one one of the things that we started out looking at is how much we were going to actually get in into this this drawing. And if I uh, drawn uh, it at as exactly as it subtended to the eye, I would, onto this page, I was only going to get. To about this this point, so I, I've added another uh, twenty percent to the to the uh, amount of information that's getting into the drawing. Um, that's the effect of a long a long panorama type view. smaller I'm actually going to get quite a lot of this reflective uh, image um, and it's great fun to do and people think oh well just a reflection is just the same thing but upside down but it isn't at all because it, what a reflection is offering you is a viewpoint a whole lot lower than the one you're at. So I'm sitting a metre and a half above above the water level, so the reflected um, viewpoint is three metres below my eye height at the moment. It's a big difference. 